Hello there geographers and welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be talking about population pyramids. This video is going to be looking at population pyramids, going over what they are, what they show us, how to interpret them, but also how do we connect these to the demographic transition model? How can we see stages within these pyramids? So we'll be doing a lot of kind of comparing and analyzing throughout this video. So make sure you take out your guided notes. You can find them in the description below. I made the guide notes to go along with the video and to help you out. By doing the guided notes, you'll remember all this information. But let's get on to the video now and better understand what's going on with population pyramids and how do these connect to the real world today? So to start out, let's just break down what a population pyramid is. Population pyramids are ways for geographers to convey information that is kind of complex and it would take a lot to do if we were looking at just the raw data. What they show is age distributions, sex ratios, our dependency ratio, which is how many people will be working or in the working age, and comparing it to how many people are not working. So it's actually some division that we would do, and we'll be able to see essentially, are we being able to support our population that's not working, are we not? You can even break this down even further and get into the elderly support ratio and other things like that as well. But population pyramids give us a lot of information. One of the things that we can see already by looking at, and you can see it on the screen right now, is a lot of them are gonna be color coded and they're broken down by sex, males on one side and females on the other side. Now the colors may change, but the concept stays the same. Also you can see in the population pyramid, in the middle we have these brackets of ages from zero to four all the way up to 100 plus. A lot of times they'll be around five years of bracket, sometimes four, sometimes less or more, depending on how you want to convey it. Now, the big thing that we can see here too is also with reproduction. We can see how many people are in the pre-reproduction stage of their life, how many people are in the reproductive stages, and also post-reproduction, how many people are no longer having kids. This is big for when we're trying to understand CBR and CDR and NIR and how all these things can impact a country. And these population pyramids really give us a lot of information. We can see some trends that, while they don't predict the future, can make it so we can give a really good educated guess. We make inferences with these. We can look at the current day and see what's happening in society. We can also look at past years and see, well, what has happened to the society. And while our predictions may not always be true, and a lot of times we'll need to do more research, we can have a really good foundation. And we can see a lot of our population trends in these charts themselves. So let's break this down even further. We're going to start by going into population pyramids and showing how they connect to each of the stages of the demographic transition model. So that way in class, when you see these pyramids, you can kind of identify what stage this is in. Now, before we get into all the details with population pyramids, it's important that you do understand the demographic transition model. If you haven't watched my video on it yet, click the card on the top right and check it out. That video will go down all the other stages and everything happening there, so you have a good understanding. Also, we're gonna go over right now a couple little tips and tricks to help you out. So these are more kind of general rule of thumb, but they can help you be able to decide what stage it might be. Now, one of the things to look at is the shape. If you see like a Christmas tree or a big triangle or a big evergreen tree shape, that means we're having a really high population boom. So we're seeing a lot of births. The majority of our country is at the bottom. Or if we have a really wide base, that means we have a lot of people in those pre-reproductive years or coming into reproductive. And so we're seeing this trend word up within population. If we have more of a box shape, like it's going like that, or it's all kind of leveled out, that normally means we have a pretty slow population growth, that it's probably pretty close to our replacement rate, that 2.1 TFR, the total fertility rate. If you need more information on that, again, check out the demographic transition video. But that means we've kind of stabilized. If we have a larger population, when we're looking at the chart, if the majority of the chart is kind of in the middle, and we're starting to slowly see a decrease on the bottom base, but still it's not that top heavy, that normally means we probably have some moderate growth. And if we have like a cup stage, or if it, so it looks like this, if we have the top is a lot bigger, that's where we're starting to get into late stage four, maybe even five, and we're seeing a decrease in our growth rate. And we're actually gonna be shrinking as our population becomes older. 
So remember these kind of tips for looking at things as we go through the different stages and we see a bunch of different population pyramids. So right now we're gonna be talking about stage two. Now, if you've noticed, I've already kind of skipped stage one. Remember, there's no countries in stage one, so we're not gonna be focusing on that as much. Now, on the other hand, these population periods can be used in other ways than just countries. Remember when we're talking about scale? So in our first unit, we talked about that, different levels of spatial scale even. We could talk about a population pyramid for your school. We could talk about for your classroom. We could talk about for a city government, a state, or even just a localized community. So there's a bunch of different things that can happen here. Right now, we're just kind of focusing on countries. So since there's no countries in stage one, I'm kind of skipping a population pyramid on stage one. But theoretically, I guess if we were doing a population pyramid on a tribe, we could have one. It would just have a really big base and uh, people would die off pretty fast. So we wouldn't have that much growth going upwards that eventually it would just shoot inward. We have a very good triangle. Now, stage two you can see is on the board right now. One of the things happening here is we still have this large base. However, we're starting to see people are living longer. Remember in stage two, that infant mortality rate goes down. So we'll see people in that zero to four range start to live on as our base starts to go upwards. It's no longer just bottom focused. And so we'll start to see a big boom. This tells us a bunch of different things for countries in this stage. One, they're gonna have a lot of new challenges. As their population starts to double, they'll have to be able to provide more jobs. As people are living longer, they'll have to start seeing different ways that they can accommodate everyone, get housing, and even be able to get more resources to support the growing population. The other thing that we can see here too in this stage, and the reason why it is a stage two and not a stage three, is the middle still isn't that filled out. If you look at them right now, you can tell we have our bigger base and then it starts to go inwards. Now again, if this was like a stage one, it would go like that. And we'll get into that later on. But the big thing here for stage two countries is that wider base and they're starting to live longer because we are seeing advancements in technology. That medical revolution has happened. The industrial revolution has happened. Now, before we get into stage three, pause this video and think to yourself, what do you think could cause a country from going stage two to stage three? This is some review of the demographic transition model and it'll help. So pause this and think about it. All right. Hopefully you figured it out. Let's go to stage three and let's we'll see if you figured it out by using population pyramids. So first let's address the population pyramid here. One of the reasons why this is stage three is you can see that the majority of our population is under that 50 year old mark. And we've also seen now under the 10 year old mark that they are no longer the dominant kind of age range. They're actually now starting to go down and people between the 20 to 50 make up the majority of our demographics here. So demographics, we're talking about the people. And so this is showing we're still growing, but our growth has slowed down. Now, the last time I said, well, what could cause this to happen? And maybe you figured it out. If you didn't, here's some of the answers. One of the things that could have caused a move from two to three is now urbanization, new forms of also economic prosperity, so new jobs where family sizes that are larger are no longer advantageous. The other thing that starts to happen, and we saw it in our last population pyramid, is that growth is happening. And the growth is happening because people are living longer. Remember, that base was big and it continued to go up. And people weren't dying at 20 years old. They were starting to live longer. And as people start to realize that, they'll start to have less kids. And then you get more of the population pyramid we have now. Other things too that can also move a country from stage two to three might even be some government regulation. Regulation with even populations. It happens in a lot of countries. China, for example, has done it. India has done things. Chile has done it where the government comes in and promotes family planning or even puts laws to limit how many kids you can have. And sometimes you can even see the effects within a population pyramid as they'll make irregular shapes that show a change in policy that will allow for more kids to be born and then a decrease. And so we'll get into that more at a later time with really specific examples, but those are things to look for. If we can see some really weird shapes forming within a population pyramid, normally that means something is happening to society that is causing it to become altered. Now, before we go to four, try to think about what would cause a society to go from three to four, because now we're gonna to get to the next one. All the answers are coming up. 
So with stage four, we can see now that the majority of our population is no longer in that zero to 30 range. Actually, the older generation is starting to make up more of our population. And while this one is in a perfect box, you can see it's starting to level out. We're becoming more balanced and we're starting to see where population will decrease or just become stagnant and we're not gonna have population growth. That'd be that ZPG. Now there's a bunch of different things that could happen here. This could be, again, because of the government controlling things, but a lot of times it's because we have even more urbanization and women start to have more roles within society. When women have more roles, they have less time to have kids. When we started to see more women, for example, in the United States, take on leadership roles and form careers and graduate college and start to play a more active role in society, they decided to stop having as many kids. And even just culturally how we view women and men as gender roles change and as we start to realize that people can do what they want to do and instead of pegging people as breadwinners or baby makers, we see shifts in our population growth rates. And so one of the things that we can see here is that shift starting to happen. As our chart now you can see is becoming a lot more filled out. It's no longer focused on the bottom. We don't have that large base anymore. And this can eventually lead to stage five. So with stage five, we're starting to see now the top becomes the majority of our population and the middle has shrunken and also the bottom has. We're no longer having that replacement rate. We're under 2.1 total fertility. And so what's happening then is we don't have people replacing. And because of that, we're starting to see a decrease in our population size and our growth rate. So this has happened to some countries already, Japan and Russia being two of them. Now the question of is stage five a thing or is it not is still up for debate. But this would be just an example of a population period where we're seeing a decrease. We're seeing a decline in the population. Earlier in this video, I talked about some population pyramids that might have a, an irregular pattern. And I'm going to put one on the board right now. And I want you to try to figure out kind of what's happening. Take a second to think about themes. What could cause stuff? Look at the years of where people are coming, the sex of who's coming and who's leaving and what's going on with this. I've already even kind of given you some hints just in how I worded this. So pause this video, analyze this chart. Why do you think it looks like this? What's going on? Try to think to yourself and figure it out. I can wait. Do, 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 do. Thinking is fun. Now we stop this horrible song. So let's get into the answer. One of the things you can see here is the majority of our population is actually men. And especially in those working years, we have a huge increase. Now, I haven't given you the country name or anything like that yet. So we can't make inferences about the uh, culture or the geography location or anything that's going on there. But we can see that the majority of people come right around their 20s or so when they're going to work. And then they leave right around retirement age. So one inference we could have is maybe we're having a big migration here. We have a lot of workers that are attracted and the work might be male dominated. Now this could be because the society doesn't allow women to work or it could also be that maybe these are very industrial jobs or labor intensive and so they need men to be able to work. And so we see them recruit people from other countries to be able to make up their workforce. The other thing too that would kind of show that, hey, this could be a possibility, if we look at the bottom, we can see actually our birth rates for men and women are around the same. Sometimes if we see a really big increase in just male births over female births, it can show us some kind of issues with how culture views gender and sex and how sometimes it'll lead to more female abortions where they would get rid of women in order to have a boy so that way they could ha pass on the name. But we can see in this example, that's not happening. They're kind of the same, a little bit off, but for the most part, the same. The big focus in this one is those working ages. So this is just an example of how we could look at a population pyramid without even really knowing what country it is or where it is, but be able to make some educated guesses. I just went over a lot of information, all just based off looking on this. Now, some of those could be true. Some of them might be a little off but these inferences are our best educated guesses and they're based off trends and concepts that we've been going over throughout this unit. Hopefully you're starting to get a good understanding of population pyramids and even just starting to understand how you can see different themes. Other things to look for are just some basic trends that seem out of order. Try to always compare them to reality. Think about logical situations that could have occurred. 
For example, if the top of the pyramid, if we're looking at a very developed country and we can see that the majority of the elderly population are female and that most of the men have died off, well, maybe there was a war. Men traditionally get drafted and so they would have to go fight in the war where the women wouldn't have. There's a bunch of different things to look for. I would encourage you definitely on your own time to pull up population pyramids of other countries and try to see what's going on there. And if you really are ambitious, try to actually research those years of what happened. It would help you out. And then you can kind of see how good your guesses were. Well, that's about all the time I have today to talk about population pyramids. In the future, maybe I'll be able to do another one that'll go even deeper into these pyramids. This was a quick overlook, but I hope it helped. Before you leave though, make sure to subscribe. It helps my channel out and helps my channel grow and support me. And it also will let you know when more videos are coming. Hey, hit the bell too so you get notified. Why not? It's free, it doesn't cost you anything. So until next time, I'm Mr. Sin and I'll see you online.